Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Here's the question for today. LS Motors, single plane or dual plane carbureted intakes. Which one do you pick? And then what about under boost? Wah! In this video, we have the time honored shootout between a single plane intake manifold and the dual plane intake manifold, this time on an LS application. That's right, we're gonna compare the single plane to the dual plane, both naturally aspirated and under boost. Will a dual plane even work. We're also going to compare both those intake manifolds to a factory long runner EFI truck manifold. Let's check it out. So as I said earlier, I'm doing this video to illustrate what happens when you run dual plane intake manifolds and why I think they're a good choice. And for me, they're about 90% yes when somebody asks me what kind of intake to use on a street application. And in this case, even on an LS, especially on this smaller 4.8 liter. So let's take a look and see how well the dual plane works. And I'm going to show you how well they work naturally aspirate on this combination. Then also under boost, I can, we'll illustrate that. We'll do a comparison between single plane and dual plane and also the EFI intake manifold. So we'll jump right into this combination and this test. This was a 4.8 liter. We'll go ahead and look at the test description here. A 4.8 liter. This was the normal 4.8 liter that I, that I used uh, again and again and again. It had the um, the JE small dome pistons in it. It had a stock crank and block and, and Gen 4 rods. It had stock 706 heads, the production 4.8 or 5.3 heads. It had beehive springs on it because we were running some camshafts in it. It had stock rockers and push rods. And we had uh, inch and 7 eighths headers on it. We ran it first with a very small comp camshaft. It was a, an XR265. That camshaft was a 522, 529 lift, a 212, 218. So kind of think of that as like a stage two truck cam-ish kind of uh, camshaft and a 114 LSA. What we did was run this thing first with an Edelbrock RPM intake manifold and a 650 Holly. So if you went and got a 4.8 out of the wrecking yard this and put a small camshaft in it, this is kind of what it would be if you ran it with a carbureted combination and equipped as such with that dual plane intake manifold this combination produced 375 horsepower at 6300 rpm there and had a nice flat torque curve and made 342 foot pounds uh, maybe had a little bit more here now 342 foot pounds of torque and again a flat torque curve but let's look at this in comparison to a single plane intake because we also ran this exact same combination. We just changed it over to the Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake manifold. And this is our Victor Jr. intake manifold. And you can see the interesting thing, normally when we run a single plane and a dual plane, the single plane will make more power on the top oftentimes, not on this particular small motor it didn't. It actually made the same. And so we're looking at uh, 376 horsepower. But the thing that's uh, most evident about this comparison between the two um, intake manifolds is that the single plane made less power than the dual plane from the starting RPM all the way up to 5,700. And then only then did it, after that, did it equal the dual plane. So it's obviously not a great choice, especially for this little 4.8. There would be no comparison here for a single plane versus a dual plane um, on this little 4.8. And it becomes more of a question for motors that have more camshaft or are running more engine speed and or motors that have more displacement. So the, the 5.3, the 6.0, 6.2 that kind of stuff. But for this combination, obviously a dual plane, but we also compared this to the factory long runner truck intake manifold, which makes an interesting comparison. So I'm gonna get rid of the Victor Jr. to not confuse things. And then we'll look at the truck intake manifold. And you can see the truck intake manifold shown here in red makes more power than the dual plane from about 4,500 all the way up to 6,500. The peak power is not too much over the dual plane at 381 horsepower, but you can see in this middle part from, you know, 46 or 4,700 out to 62 or 6,300, it made a lot more power. The interesting thing about that is if you take a look at the rest of the curve down below 4,000 RPM, the dual plane is actually quite a bit better than the truck manifold, which I found surprising because normally our go-to thing is long runner truck manifolds for making low speed torque. But actually the dual plane carbureted intake for low speed power down there, and we, I've seen this time and time again, 
actually makes more low speed power than the truck manifold does. So let's take a look at another combination that we ran this with some boost. Here's another example of using and we're comparing the dual plane uh, on an LS application. We're comparing the dual plane to the single plane, both naturally aspirated and under boost. So we started out with the dual plane and this combination was the same 4.8 test motor with our Forge JE piston, the small dome one. This time it had TrickFlow 205 heads. It had a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 1 uh, positive displacement blower cam, so bigger than the cam that we used in the previous example. It was a 610 586 lift, a 223-238 degree duration split, and a wide 120 degree lobe separation angle for a positive displacement application. We ran it with, it also had an ATI dampener, we ran it, the MSD controller on it, um, the ignition controller, to dial in the um, timing curve. We ran this with a total timing of 31 degrees on the NA combination, and we ran this with a set of long tube headers. These were inch and three quarter headers. You had the QTP headers with O2 sensors and stuff. And we were what we were doing was when we were running this boosted as a blow through application because we ran our uh, later on we'd put the blow through carburetor on there. We were running 802s in it to find out how the distribution was on a on a separate test that we had done. But here's what happened when we ran this thing with a dual plane and a 750 Holly. This thing made 440 horsepower and 352 foot pounds. And then here's what happened. You might think on a wilder combination, especially one that we're revving out to 7,000 RPM, might benefit from the Victor Junior. And you can see that it, in this case, it did not. Um, we saw, again, a big loss in low speed torque. There was a little bit of a crossover between 5,000 and 5,600 RPM, where the, dual, the single plane actually started to be, do a little bit better. But from there on out, it was only equal to or slightly less than the single plane. And the interesting thing is I'm going to show you also we ran this exact same comparison when we ran this thing under boost with a centrifugal supercharger. So let's check it out. So here's our final test comparing the dual plane to the single plane carbureted application. This time run as a blow through with a Vortec supercharger. And you can see we're making some fairly good power here up near up near 800 horsepower. So we swapped out the 750 carburetor for an 850 CSU. We ran the CSU bonnet. We ran a Vortec TI trim and then also a our fairly good sized CX Racing air to water intercooler. And we did adjustments on the blow through carburetor to make sure that the air fuel was correct. And here's, I'll go ahead and put the boost levels up here so you guys can see what was going on, how much boost we ran on these combinations. But we ran it first with the Performer RPM. And as you can see, you could run a blow through carburetor application with a dual plane. And by the way, as a side note, you can also run dual planes with nitrous and turbos and anything else because they work just fine. So run with our uh, dual plane, we made right at 800 horsepower, 790. 98.9, 799 horsepower, 598 foot pounds. But here's what happened when we ran our single plane Victor Jr. intake manifold, the same carburetor and blower and all of that stuff. You can see they made comparable power. In fact, we rev the single plane out a little bit more and it ended up making a little bit more power than the dual plane only because we ran another 100 RPM. We actually ran that one to 7,000 and the other one only to 6,900. But at the top of the rev range, they were very, very comparable like they were when they were nasty aspirated. But the interesting thing and the thing that I kind of want to point out is Take a look down here below 5,000 RPM. We still see the same thing. A single plane makes less power down there even when it's boosted because that's the design of the manifold. Intake manifolds are RPM specific, so you want to run them and choose them for a specific RPM. But on this little 4.8, even out at 7,000 RPM, whether it's naturally aspirated or under boost, the dual plane is the better choice. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, we got some good stuff here. What's our takeaway in this comparison between a single plane intake manifold and a dual plane intake manifold on our little 4.8 liter LS and also as a comparison to the factory long runner truck intake? Well, we learned the following thing. 
Carbureted intake and manifolds obviously work very well. In fact, the dual plane arguably can be said it made even more low speed power than the truck manifold, although it didn't make as much power through the middle part of the curve. But really the takeaway for this is I wanted to show people, especially on this smaller 4.8 liter LS application, it's really hard to beat a dual plane intake manifold, especially in comparison to a single plane, even out at 7,000 RPM. And even under boost, the dual plane really is the better choice. Arbiter Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep testing.